Welcome D20 players. Let's take a look at the 2024 Monk preview that we just got today. I'll be comparing that to the 2014 Monk that we have here on the left side of the screen. On the right side of the screen, I got the very latest play test and anything that's changed, I've highlighted. If it's yellow, I'm not confirmed if it's uh, been kept. If it's green, got some confirmation it's been kept. If it's reddish orange, uh, there's been a slight tweak to it. So starting with the Monk table, we see we had Monk's Discipline has been renamed to Monk's Focus, which was uh, renamed from Key originally. Uh, new at level two, we have Uncanny Metabolism. Deflect Missiles is now Deflect Attacks. At level six, instead of Key Empowered Strikes, we have just Empowered Strikes. At level 10, we have Heightened Discipline and Self-Restoration, replacing Purity of Body. At level, they didn't talk about Acrobatic Movement, but I imagine that might be the same. At level 13, we have Deflect Energy. At level 14, we have Discipline Survivor, replacing Diamond Soul. 15, Perfect Discipline, replacing Timeless Body. 18, Superior Defense, replacing Empty Body. Uh, 19, Ability Score Improvement, changed to Epic Boon. And then level 20, Perfect Self to Body and Mind. Their Martial Arts dice are increased, starting at D6 instead of D4, and obtaining D12 at the highest levels instead of just D10. And Discipline Points, renamed to Focus Points. So that's the monk table for the 2024 monk. Now we'll look at the uh, abilities right away, the weapons that they are proficient with. We can expect them to have martial weapons that have the light property being proficient there. Not confirmed independently, but that's what their martial arts work with. So I assume that will probably be in there. Level one, martial arts, simple melee weapons and martial weapons with a light property. Their bonus on arm strike is not required to be combined with an attack action. So that's a huge impact on versatility for the monk. Their dexterous attacks at level 1, they can use their dexterity instead of their strength for their attack and damage rolls with unarmed strikes and monk weapons. And they can use them for the, the parts of the grapple or shove option that they have. Let's take a quick peek at that grapple and shove change with 2024. This is in the latest playtest, the unarmed strike. They've combined the damage and the grapple and the shove all together under unarmed strikes. So now monk with their unarmed strikes can kind of mix and match these from doing damage to grappling where the target must succeed on strength or dex saving throw. And so the monks can be setting that DC with their dexterity modifier. Or shove, where you can push the target five feet or cause them to go prone. And again, the monk can use their dexterity modifier there. We saw in the chart their, their martial arts die starts with a D6, and that can be used in place of an arm strike or monk weapon. Level two, monk's discipline is monk's focus now. Everywhere we see discipline, it'll be focus. Flurry of Blows, you get to make two unarmed strikes if you spend a discipline point or a focus point, and again, without being connected to an attack. Patient Defense, uh, you can always disengage as a bonus action without any focus points. With one focus point, you can take both the disengage and the dodge action as a bonus action combined. Step of the Wind, you can always dash as a bonus action. And if you spend a focus point, you can take both the disengage and dash actions together as a bonus action. And... Your jump distance is doubled for the turn. Level two, a new thing called Uncanny Metabolism. When you roll initiative, you can regain all expended focus points. You can also heal some damage. Your martial arts die, you roll, and you add that to your monk level. And that's how many hit points you regain. You can do that once per long rest. Deflect missiles have become deflect attacks, and now any melee or range attacks incoming that do bludgeoning, piercing, or slashing damage, you can deflect. You roll a d10 like before, add your dex modifier plus your monk modifier at monk level. And if you happen to reduce that damage to zero, you can redirect it. Monk subclass is coming at level three. We got Warrior of Mercy, Warrior of Shadow, Warrior of the Four Elements, and Warrior of the Hand. I assume level four and level five powers are the same. They didn't speak to them. The level five, the level five extra attack, that is. The level five stunning strike has been modified. It is once per turn like it was in the playtest. Um, it lasts until the start of your next turn, not the end of your next turn. One... Thing. They did keep the effect even if they make their saving throw, although they changed the effect. Now is their speed will be halved and the next attack against them has advantage. So if you're doing this with the, one of your first blows, you'll have advantage on your next blow even if they make their save. So at least it does something there. That one did need to be toned down. A well-optimized monk could really make mincemeat of some pretty powerful opponents. Level 6, Empowered Strike. Sunarm Strike can deal you your choice of force damage or normal damage. Level 7, Evasion. They didn't talk about this at all. Uh, in the playtest, you don't benefit from this feature if you have the incapacitated condition. I assume it's probably the same, uh, but it didn't mention it. Level 9, Acrobatic Movement. If you're not wearing armor or wielding a shield, you get the ability to move along vertical surfaces or across liquids on your turn without falling during the movement. 
No mention of that was retained. Level 10, heightened discipline. Your training has pushed your body and mind to new levels. So with your flurry of blows, you spend a discipline point and you get three attacks instead of just two. Patient defense, when you spend a discipline point, you also get temporary hit points two times your martial arts die, two rolls of your martial arts die. And then step of the wind, you can bring someone with you on the step of the wind. If they are willing and they're within 550 view and they're large or smaller, they can move with you until the end of your turn without opportunity attacks. Level 10, self-restoration. You can remove one of the following conditions from yourself at the end of each of your turns, charmed, frightened, or poisoned. In addition, foregoing food and drink doesn't give you levels of exhaustion. Level 13, deflect energy. Now your deflect attack can be against any incoming damage type. So deflect attacks, now it's going to be any incoming damage type, except, was there one that didn't affect? Um, no, anything. Level 14, discipline survivor. No change from before. Level 15, perfect discipline. You roll initiative and have three discipline points or fewer. You regain um, expended discipline points until you have four. Superior defense. At the start of your turn, you can spend three discipline points to perfectly bolster yourself. And for a minute, you will have resistance to all damage except force damage. Level 20, body of mind. Same as the play test, except the max is 25 now instead of 26. Not sure why that is in there. What specifically required it to come down from 26 down to 25. Okay, the subclasses. So we're going to look back at uh, Way of Mercy, and now it's Warrior of Mercy. This one came about, I think, from Tasha's, and they say it's largely unchanged. The only changes to that one is Hand of Mercy is now a magic action, and if you do a flurry of healing and harm, you can only do it uh, your Wisdom modifier times per long rest. Otherwise, the Warrior of Mercy is unchanged. Then if we look back at Playtest 6 for the Warrior of the Elements, they made a lot of changes there, and they seem to have retained all of them. You know the Elementalism cantrip at level 3. At the start of your turn, you can spend a discipline point to imbue yourself with elemental energy that lasts for 10 minutes or until you're incapacitated. And what this does is it grants you to change your damage type. You get to pick with every attack, acid, cold, fire, lightning, and they added thunder. This latest, latest release, it looks like. Uh, you can also force them to move. With a strength saving throw, you can push them or pull them up to 10 feet. And your reach goes out to 10 feet. Then at level 6 is a magic action. You can basically throw... Fireballs, cold balls, lightning balls, uh, probably thunder. It's probably added to that and acid. And they didn't confirm the damage, but it used to be three rolls your martial arts die. And then it used to also grant you that before or after the action, you can make an unarmed strike as a bonus, but that's standard for all monks now. So I suppose that will go away. 11th level, stride of the elements. When you use your step of the wind, you get a fly speed and swim speed equal to your speed for 10 minutes. So I don't know if that's going to be exactly the same, that 10 minutes part. Level 17, Elemental Epitome. Damage resistance, you gain resistance to one of the following damage types, so Acid, Cold, Fire, Lightning, or Thunder. And you can change it at the start of each of your turns. Destructive Stride, when you use your Step of the Wind, you can deal damage to creatures around you, equivalent to the damage you're resisting. And uh, they can take that damage once per turn. It is uh, one roll of your martial arts die when you enter a space within five feet of them. And given the monk speed, I would say... Um, You'd probably be able to hit like a lot of creatures with that. Empowered Strikes. Once on each of your turns, you can deal extra damage to a target equal to one roll of your martial arts die when you hit them with an arm of strike. And that damage will be what you're resisting. So that's the Warrior of the Four Elements. The Warrior of Shadow. The Warrior of Shadow, it saw a lot of change in the last playtest, and it looks like it's almost all retained. Everything that was in that playtest is confirmed. Uh, your Darkness, where you can spend a Discipline Point to cast Darkness. You can see within it. You can move it. You gain dark vision, you can do minor illusions. Uh, at 11th level, you have improved shadow step where you can spend a discipline point to remove the requirement that you must start and end in dim light for when you teleport. As part of this bonus action, you can make an unarmed strike immediately after the teleportation as well. Level 17, Cloak of Shadows, bonus action when you're in dim or light or darkness. Spend three, three focus points, shroud yourself with magical darkness for a minute, and um, you have an invisible condition that doesn't end. You have, at least not for the minute that your power is going, move through creatures and objects as if they were difficult terrain, like you're partially incorporeal, and Shadow Flurry, Flurry of Blows without spending any discipline points. That is the Warrior of Shadow. And then in Playtest 8, we saw the Warrior of the Hand. So this one, the open hand technique, they retain this part about how you can make it so they cannot take opportunity attacks, used to say reactions, but given that Looks like a lot of maybe legendary creatures are using multiple reactions. They had to change um, it, taking away the reaction capability. 
Wholeness of body is now bonus action. That's a nice upgrade. You can roll your martial arts die. You regain a number of hit points equal to the number rolled plus your wisdom modifier. You can do that multiple times now. Nice upgrade there. Fleet step, a new power. You can easily stride out of harm's way when you take a bonus action other than step of the wind. So flurry of blows, for example. You can use step of the wind as part of that bonus action. And Jeremy said immediately after rather than part. So I don't know what the final wording will be there on that one. Quivering Palm, we saw this get changed. It's four discipline points. That's been confirmed. You're doing 10d12 damage, save for half, is still confirmed. That's the Quivering Palm. That is the Monk. I'd say overall, uh, nice updates on the Monk. I'm looking forward to seeing those in play. They're going to be all over the battlefield. I mean, their movement capabilities are insane. So many attacks, so many grapples, so many shoves, so, so much force movement. Should be a fun, fun class to see played. Check back for the next video. I will see you guys all next time.